So beginning tomorrow at 10 a.m., the City of Denver and the Denver Broncos will be hosting the Denver Broncos World Championship Parade and Celebration here in downtown Denver. Um, the uh, entertainment portion of the events kicks off at 10 a.m. in Civic Center Park. We'll have local entertainment provided by uh, Big Head Todd and the Monsters, Funkafino, and 303. The parade kicks off at 12 p.m. at 17th and Winecoop. And then the parade route will, will go up 17th Street to Broadway and end at Civic Center Park. And then beginning at 1 o'clock, we'll have a rally on stage with the team. Um, the mayor and Governor Hickenlooper and probably some other guests that we're still working on at this point. Uh, but that's the overview of the run of show. Um, in terms of what the city is doing to prepare, um, as you can probably tell, we've already gone into, um, you know, planning mode, preparation mode. Um, we've we've uh, put a lot of things into place overnight. Um, street closures uh, will be starting later today and, and into tomorrow. Basically, the public can anticipate that streets along the parade route, around Civic Center Park, and around the city and county building will start to be shut down um, at some point today or into tomorrow morning. Um, main intersections, major arteries, and that sort of thing will stay open during rush hour from what we know at this point. But by the time um, everything gets going, or, you know, between 10 and 11 a.m. before the parade kicks off, the public should really anticipate that um, there will be a lot of road closures and they'll need to plan accordingly in terms of transportation and um, arriving early and that sort of thing. Um, we're encouraging public transportation, walking as much as possible, of course. Um, we are encouraging folks to get down here early, plan to stay late, you know, come, come with your water bottle so that you can stay hydrated. Uh, we'll have public toilets available at Civic Center Park. So we will be doing a lot to try and um, make this a fun and enjoyable experience for everybody. But we do want to make sure that folks know they need to be prepared for a long, fun day here downtown. So good question. Um, we are asking people to avoid bringing backpacks and large bags, large items like coolers, and um, no chairs or seating devices of any sort. Essentially think of it as you would um, in terms of what you would bring to a football game if you were going to Sports Authority Field. Um, on that note, uh, alcohol and marijuana are also prohibited, so we don't want anybody bringing that in, of course. Um, those are our higher, our high arching rules at this point. Um, and we're just asking people to plan to have fun and celebrate responsibly. Not at this point, no. Um, once, once the parade and rally are over, we'll be getting everything picked up, cleaned up, and, and getting um, streets back to business as usual. And in terms of how many people we're expecting, we don't have a number at this point. Um, but if, you know, history with this type of event, whether it was uh, Broncos championships or Avalanche championships, um, history tells us that this will probably be a pretty big event and, and we can expect a lot of people. I have not heard that number, and, and we definitely are not talking about whether or not we would set records at this point. Um, so we'll just have to see what happens. <laughs> Jenny, the, um, probably not know overall cost is what it takes to put something like this off, but what, what's the contingency planning for how those costs will be covered? Um, what are the biggest costs? That's a great question, and I don't know the answer to that at this point, honestly. Um, that's something that we'll have to be circling the wagons on, you know, as the event gets underway and unfolds, and, and you know, we're, we'll be looking at all of that, but I don't have the answer to that today. Is there any um, uh, offer by the Broncos to underwrite some costs, or is this going be on the city? I honestly don't know that either at this point. I haven't been involved in that conversation. So you probably don't know the answer why, maybe Doug, just sure. thumbnails of maybe what extra police security, some of the things they're asking people to go ahead and record anything you see, you see something, say something. Can, can sure, yeah. Them? Yeah, I would love to toss to Doug on that. <laughs> Good afternoon. Uh, my name is Doug Shepman. Last name is spelled S-C-H-E-P-M-A-N, and I'm a spokesperson for the Denver Police Department. Um, first, I want to start out by saying that uh, the police department really appreciates the thousands of people that came out downtown last night and celebrated responsibly and in a way that um, our city can really be proud of. And we also really appreciate the efforts of the police officers who are out there helping to ensure a safe environment for all of those fans. Um, our message 
going into the parade tomorrow is the same as it has been leading up to uh, Super Bowl Sunday, which is that we encourage people to celebrate responsibly, uh, to plan ahead for tomorrow, and maybe most importantly, to be patient. This is going to be a really um, large event with a lot of people downtown with road closures. <clears throat> and so we encourage people to just really be patient with one another, um, you know, focus on having a good time. Um, from a security standpoint, we will um, execute a security plan for the event. <clears throat> we um, execute security plans for parades and large scale events um, in Denver throughout the year. And so we'll be ready to address um, any issues that might arise. People who are downtown will definitely see uh, a large number of uh, police officers, um, particularly on foot in the area around the parade route and around um, City Center Park to ensure that we have a safe environment and to address any criminal activity that might occur. Can you and, give a ballpark of how many officers would be assigned to this? Yeah, we don't typically discuss the number of officers that would be assigned to a special event like this just so that um, you know we can uh, you know, keep that sort of tactical advantage. Um, we don't want to dis disclose all of our um, plans for folks. Will some of that be on, on overtime or is it will just be on duty anyway? Uh, uh, I'm not sure whether this is, we're just um, shuffling shifts at this point or whether we're bringing officers in on overtime. We'll be able to account for that um, after the event. Okay. How difficult is it to organize and come back to security plans? You're not really sure how many people need to come down, especially in such a short time. Yeah, well, we, uh, the Denver Police Department has, has dealt with large scale events, um, you know, for years, uh, going back to even, you know, the Democratic National Convention, which um, you know, we were able to, to um, provide security for in a very effective way. And so um, all we can do is, is plan for, um, uh, you know, different types of, of incidents that, that could occur at an at a event like this to have the appropriate level of staffing on hand to deal with them. I mean, I can say in a general sense that we are always in contact with uh, state and federal law enforcement partners to to monitor um, any potential threats. You know, and what, you know let me, I mean, it, it's possible that that uh, you know we would have fewer um, issues related to consumption. Um, you know, we're hoping that uh, you know the the. The climate around this event is that it's a, a family event. Um, uh, alcohol, marijuana consumption are going to be prohibited, and so um, we hope that that any issues around consumption, um, you know, would be minimal and would definitely be be different than you know yesterday when we had um, you know a lot of folks downtown to watch the game. You know, and the community can really help us to to maintain a self environment down here as well. Um, we ask that anyone, if they see anything suspicious, to please report it to us and let an officer check it out. Um, you know, the adage is, see something, say something, and we really encourage that, that, that people do that. Jenny, um, I don't know if you or not, the uh, last ab spray and their memory, did those also do the 17th oh, no. oh, I'm so sorry. You know, that I don't know for sure. I was not, I don't think I was working for the city during those events, um, so I don't know for sure, but um, it is pretty typical for us to use 17th as, a, as some form of a parade route. I mean, the Parade of Lights utilizes that, and but I don't know the exact parade routes. And is it going to be a similar setup? That's what I was hearing as far Sorry. as, as <laughs> players riding atop fire trucks, that type of thing. Yes, yes. So we will have um, the entire Denver Broncos team. Um, Coach Kubiak, uh, John Elway, um, the Bolin family, the uh, Denver Broncos cheerleaders, the Denver Broncos uh, stampede drumline. I always have a hard time getting that one out. Um, Miles and Thunder all on the parade route and the majority of them, obviously not the horses, uh, but the majority of them riding on uh, fire trucks from across the city. Uh, the mayor and Governor Hickenlooper will also be riding fire trucks. Um, and so it'll be, you know, it'll be a fun, um, energetic feel and and as Doug was saying a, a very family friendly environment and, and we really want to um, give fans an opportunity to cheer on the team um, express their pride in Denver and and really show what a great place this is uh, for sports teams and for all of us to to come together
Yeah. Um, you know, there are a lot of moving parts, as you can imagine. We have a lot of um, public safety concerns to take into account. We have um, transit issues to take into account, plus just, you know, the uh, magnitude of this type of an event um, to plan for. So it is a lot of moving parts that had to be put into action very quickly. Um, but the great thing is that as a city, we are accustomed to coming together um, from all across all of our departments, whether that's safety to public works to parks and recreation, the mayor's office, office of special events. We're, we're accustomed to this type of environment where we come together on short notice to get something done for for the city and and uh, to, to you know to really showcase who we are. So um, we have great people in place who are able to to do that on on pretty short notice. Luckily for us. Yeah, I think if, if, if there is something suspicious that's brought to our attention, an officer will address that. If that, if that means checking a backpack, then they will do that. Do you have any idea how many vehicles are in the parade? Just a rough idea how long you think it might take to get from the beginning of the parade to the end of the parade along the route. That, that's something that we are still working through right now, but right now we're estimating that it'll be an hour-long parade, give or take a little. And I don't know the number of trucks offhand. That I, that I think will, will remain to be seen tomorrow, but um, I, I would say that anywhere along the parade route, anywhere, anywhere between um, Wine Coop and Broadway along 17th is going to be you know packed full of folks. Um, and same goes for the park. We will have live streaming of the parade happening at Civic Center Park on uh, you know large screens to either side of the stage. Um, so for folks who don't um, necessarily want, if they want a better place you know at the rally, they can watch the parade on the screens from the rally. If they if it's more important to watch the parade in person, then you know there there's certainly the opportunity to do that too. Last question. Go ahead. Thank you. Anyway. Okay. Thanks, thanks, thanks guys. Thanks. 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 Thanks.